Many years ago, I was on a shift called Meet and Turn. This is where the driver that lives out of the city will drive a load halfway to its destination, while the other driver meets him halfway and brings the load where it needs to be delivered. I had been doing runs like these for several months, and I found out that I had to meet on point an hour before the other driver arrived. It was a dark and empty lot around 2 a.m., so since there was still some time to pass, I decided to close my eyes and take a short nap. About ten minutes into my nap, I was awakened by a barking dog. I tried to ignore it, but the bark carried on for several minutes and it grew louder and closer. At this point, it became clear that he was either trying to alert me of something, or he's just being a pain in the butt. So I sat up and looked out my window, and what I saw left me motionless. Standing there, inches on the other side of the glass, was a man probably in his late thirties. He was a large fellow, and he was barking at me. His eyes were crazy, and he was even frothing from his mouth. The sheer creepiness struck me, and gently, without making any sudden movements, I reached down and started my truck, and slowly started pulling away. As I was doing so, he was chasing after me, much like you would expect an angry dog and still barking as I kept pulling away. Needless to say, I don't take naps on the job anymore. My brother was a truck driver in the late 1990s. He was driving through Pennsylvania on his way back to New Jersey. It was time for a break, so he pulled over to the side of the road behind two other trailers. Early in the morning, he heard someone bang loudly on his right door. He quickly jumps from the sleeping compartment and grabs his bat. As he looks out the window, there's no one there, but now there's a bang on the left side. Freaked out, he looks out that window, but there's nothing but silence now. He's trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Seconds later, there's banging on both doors simultaneously. He said the banging was so loud and heavy that the truck was shaking. With both curtains open, he can see that there's no one out there. He quickly jumps in the driver's seat and starts the truck, and he sees the other two trucks ahead of him do the same. He said he felt as if they all had experienced the same thing. Please drop a like and subscribe for more scary stories. I am not a superstitious person. I'm also very skeptical about ghosts and spirits, etc., but I always have chills running up and down my spine whenever I remember this. So this was back in the fall of 1998. I had been a truck driver for about ten months at the time. I was driving down a lonely stretch of two-lane back roads in central Louisiana, and I hadn't passed a town in miles. This was just about sunset. As I'm driving down the road and enjoying the scenery up ahead, I see a hitchhiker waving his hand. I thought to myself that I could use the company for a few miles and was going to pull over. Then, the way he was dressed caught my eye. It was as if he was a greaser straight from the 1950s. Also, the entire time I was approaching him, he kept his back to me. This all happened in about three miles in a couple of minutes. All of a sudden, I just got this feeling that I shouldn't stop. So instead of stopping, I went wide around the person. That's when I looked in the mirror. It could have all just been in my imagination, but it still scares me to this day. Where a face should have been, an eyeless skull was staring back at me. Then, in the blink of an eye, the guy was gone. I continued driving without looking back again. Did I actually see the eyeless skull, or was it all in my mind? I'm not sure, but I will not forget that image for the rest of my life. I drive a lot of miles in a company truck for my oil field company. I am on call 24-7, so I am out at all hours. One night, after a long day on a location in the Oklahoma Panhandle, which is rather remote and sparsely populated, I was driving back to the town where my shop is located. I got too sleepy to drive and decided to pull over and nap until the sun came up. So I pulled off of the two-lane highway down a county road and parked on the side of that road. It's safer than pulling off on the shoulder of the highway and no headlights to bother you. This was common practice for me. I left my pickup running, turned the headlights off and leaned my seat back. 
I fell asleep pretty quickly with the AC on low and the radio turned off. I slept pretty well for maybe an hour, and then I guess I was having strange dreams, so I woke up but just kept laying there because I was groggy. The wind was picking up and sort of shaking the truck with random strong gusts. Lots of wind in Oklahoma. Eventually, I started to imagine I was hearing whispering or murmurs, but I attributed it to the wind and my sleepy state. Or maybe the radio was still on, but at low volume. I kept hearing it, so I sat up and turned the headlights back on to look around. The lights illuminated the dirt road to my side and in front of me. About 50 feet in front of my truck and extending down the road into the dark where my headlights faded out were maybe 20 coyotes all milling around and sniffling around in the gravel of the road. Their eyes were reflecting in the light. Coyotes usually run from light and avoid humans and their noise at all costs. There was no fear in these coyotes, and I was sort of struck by how many there were all standing in the road. They all eventually moved off into the dark as a group. I wasn't really afraid as I was inside my truck, but my feeling was an uneasy one. I gave out a sigh of relief that I didn't go out to pee or something without turning on the lights first. I got back on the highway and went home. I think the creepiest thing that ever happened to me was when I was heading from Tucson, Arizona up to Salt Lake City, Utah. This was some years ago, and the main highway had been taken out in a flash flood. So, I had to take a weird detour through the mountains in Lower Utah. Well, it was getting late, and I was getting tired, so I pulled off onto the shoulder and went to sleep in my bunk. Now this was in the middle of nowhere, and the closest town was like 40 miles away so it was completely pitch black outside once I turned the lights off. Anyway, at around 4 a.m., I woke up because I was hearing something messing with my truck, like playing with the air and power cables between my cab and the trailer. Those are literally six inches from where my head is at, but on the outside of the cab. Then I feel something climb onto the landing that's on the back of my truck, and it shakes my whole truck. I'm guessing something around two to three hundred pounds was climbing around back there possibly a bear or a mountain lion. At this point, I'm wide awake, and I want to get this thing away from me, so I slam my hand into my cab wall, trying to scare whatever is out there. I slammed it hard enough to really make it loud. I then hear someone, a male, scream bloody murder, and I hear them fall off the back of my truck. I then hear about maybe 15 other people all around my truck yelling. I climb up front, Turn on my lights and illuminate a squad of army reserves doing their midnight ruck march and capture drills. Turns out these guys were supposed to go find an abandoned truck and secure it for their midnight drills. That truck was three miles back down the road. They were not expecting me to be sleeping there and thought I was part of the drill. I'm ex-military, so after explaining I was not part of their test and legit was just there out of coincidence, we laughed it off. They had to radio to their CO and tell him I was there and not have the other squads bother me. I was driving home from a late shift. I come to a part of the road that is a huge hill, then a low point, and then a huge hill again with nothing but forest all around. It was almost pitch black. As I crest the hill, I see a bright orange van on its side at the very bottom of the hill. There's a woman in a long white wedding dress standing right next to it. I slow down and see that she is covered in blood. She was standing motionless facing the orange van, then she slowly turned to the road in my direction. This was way before cell phones, so I had no way of calling the police or an ambulance. I slowly passed by the van and noticed her calm expression, her blood-stained wedding dress and the undercarriage of that toppled vehicle. I pulled over to the right, slightly past the wreckage, got out of my car, and looked back. There was nothing. There was no woman and no van, but an empty, dark road. I freaked out and went home. To this day, I still don't know what I saw. I was driving through the Canadian Rockies late at night and had just passed through a small town. So I'm driving through pitch black darkness and I need to stop to pee and have a smoke. But because it's so dark, 
I missed the last rest stop for the next while. No problem, since the highway is completely deserted. So I pull to the side of the road, have my pee while staring out into the dark, and then light up a cigarette and stand by my car. As I'm standing there, I see the figure of a man just walking out of the tree line. I'm miles from civilization, patchy cell service, and there isn't a soul on the road. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, and maybe it was a deer. But nope, this was a man. So I calmly walk back to the driver's door and get in, locking the doors behind me. I'm keeping my eye on this guy as I nervously smoke and have my car in drive, ready to peel out. But for some reason, I just stayed put. The guy walks right up to my passenger door and knocks on the window. I crack the window and I ask what's up. He replies to me in a very serious tone, I need you to call the cops. I cautiously ask why, and he tells me he had gone out into the woods to kill himself, but he couldn't go through with it because he had thought of his daughters right before he was about to do it. I call the cops while the guy quietly cries outside. He had a kitchen knife that he was going to use on himself, so I stayed in the car and advised him to maybe leave the knife on the ground before the cops arrived. The cops came and got him, but before they left with him, I gave him a solid heart-to-heart -heart and wished him well. I was spooked at first, but I was glad I didn't just drive away when I saw him. I hope he was able to turn things around 